go back to the um, requirement. What is the requirement? What is the requirement in the text for someone to be a member of the National Assembly? Before for someone to be eligible yes, to, to be, be, yes, to be yes, a member yes, of the to, to be contest as a member of the National Assembly. What is the requirement? Okay, uh, according to that section, uh, it is 7 to 89, if I'm mistaken, says for you to be um, 89, I think, yeah. For you to be a member of the National Assembly, first you need to be a Gambian, mm -hmm. and then you need to read and write English, mm -hmm. and then uh, you have to live in a constituency, for instance, if you are coming from Bacau, mm -hmm. one year prior to the election, mm -hmm. and also you should have 21 years, mm -hmm. and also finally you should uh, declare your assets to the National Assembly for you to be qualified uh, to be a National Assembly member. Mm -hmm. And then after that, after the election, you, you take your vote. And then become right. full Coming back to the uh, local language fully, yeah. which of the local languages do you think the government can use? Okay, my view on that point is like it is not going to be specifically one language. Mm -hmm. You know, government people we can speak each other's languages, mm -hmm. and to me that is not going to be a problem. Somebody can speak on your own language, whilst the other one can understand, and the other can speak on his or her own language while the other one can understand. So it is not going to be, we, the Gambia is going to choose a specific language and say this is going to be the language that is going to be. But it is going to be general. Yeah. You speak yeah. your language. If there are people like he mentioned that, others cannot understand. Yeah. yeah, we can interpret. There can be interpreters like what is happening in TRRC. Mm -hmm. When somebody is speaking on another ethnicity, there will be somebody translating it. And I think that is the best way, and that is the solution on how we can tackle this problem. Yeah, I, think, uh, I think uh, there cannot be one specific yeah. uh, ethnicity. Yeah. Uh, we will all agree to that. Yeah. And I think if I should say the only place that we work in uh, in entire Africa is only Somalia, because uh, it's where you can say they have a homogeneous society yeah. that everyone uh, speaks the same language. language. At least 19, something percent speak the same language. And if you make that particular language as the indigenous official language, it's not going to be a problem. But if you should uh, make Mandinga or what of or full of any order, how would the order say themselves? So it's good that the section of the constitution makes it this way. It says indigenous. Uh, I mean, that for yeah. instance, meaning any of these yeah. languages you can speak, Wolof, Mandinka, and anyone that you can speak, including sign language, even if you can go and do sign language, it's acceptable. Well, let's go back to the response. Thank you. I mean, if like, you look at it the, in the perspective of the requirement for someone to be uh, eligible to stand for member of parliament, it must be like someone must be, uh, must be fluent in English. That is what I'm not okay. Oh, okay. Okay. okay, it must be like from a uh, paper. So, what for those who have gone to Arabic schools? For those who have you know, plus a lot of other educational bits, uh, different from that of the English language, are they not marginalized when they come to the, their right as a citizen to stand for, uh, for it, to, stand, to, to contest to that, to that position? Like member, uh, uh, yes, um, I think uh, saying they are marginalized will be an uh, overstatement. Um, I don't think so. Because, uh, in fact, English. Uh, Though English is the official language, but yeah. Arabic is recognized because you can impact graduate from primary uh, 16 Arabic and continue period 7 in English. So, meaning it is recognized. If you have that, even the Arabic, though it's not specifically meant written in the constitution, but I'm so hence we can see that happening in the primary, then it can give you, uh, it can be a yardstick to say, well, you, you will be qualified to be uh, part of the National Assembly. So, I don't think they are marginalized. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my view on that is. Um, yeah, because I think the reason why they say you should be able to write in English uh, uh, is sorry, because one minute. Gambia is writing in English language and for, for them to be able to read what is in the constitution, they must be able to understand what is written. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't have a problem with that, like you must be able to read and write for the fact that Gambia is using the English alphabet mm -hmm. to read and understand what is in the constitution. So anybody to what if, 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 if he was yeah. he was talking about the marginalization, mm. I think yes, there are a lot of things we need to correct mm. as people because we have undergone colonization mm. and that have affect our countries in various ways and these are some of the problems we mm. bring to our country. There are many diversities and many problems that we need to solve to be able to focus on one direction as a nation so that development can come very easier. So marginalization, yeah, I think you I think yes. At some point, <laughs> yes, at some point <laughs> yeah, I'm marginalized. So we agree to that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't have a problem with that. Because if we are using English alphabets to write and read to understand the constitution, then obviously anybody to be representing people in the 
National Assembly should be able to read and write. Yes, so it's, it's not, it's not, you know, when you say fluency, that was what yeah. I wanted to correct. Uh, fluency now makes a question. They just read and write, but what is the yardstick to say, okay, this person can read, what are, what are, how are they going to know this? Yeah. You know, this is something that is not even discussed. This constitution is totally silent. It's just read, it's just read it, but totally silent. A yardstick, okay, this is what you need to measure. You are not going to provide English proficiency, for instance, or Arabic proficiency. So this, I think, gives you an argument to say, well, even if you do Arabic, mm -hmm. you are qualified. But you have to present the paper. Huh? You have to present the paper. Maybe grade 12 paper certificate that you have graduated from grade 12. In the National Assembly, I've, uh, I've, I'm not sure that section, because section 89 subsection, um, it's subsection 1A to E, I, won't, I don't think it says grade 12 certificate. I don't think so. But something like the five areas okay, that how are you going to measure? So exactly, this is what I said. Exactly. Speak, yeah. I said what yardstick are they going to use to say, okay, you you cannot speak English or write English. This is something that they, they that, I mean are they putting in place. If they are if they are to check uh, uh, the influ uh, the fluency rate of people in the National Assembly, you start kicking almost uh, forty to forty five people outside this national assembly. Because some of them they can read. But they don't even, the English is as poor as mine. Some of them can speak, but they cannot maybe read. So all these things is there. As he said, we have a lot of things to correct. But this new constitution, I think, uh, is progressively, it's, uh, it, it tends to address some of these issues. So now what do you think is going to be the importance when you implement local law in Thomas Madison? What is going to be the importance now? What is going to be the outcome of implementing local law in Thomas Madison? It's, it's straightforward. It will encourage massive, uh, I mean, the population. Yeah. They get the, the masses will now participate in their own affairs. Mm -hmm. Imagine if they are talking about uh, skin bleaching mm -hmm. and they are telling us in, in local oh. languages. It means, okay, let me know what more. Then what a hairstyle. How many people will go there? How many people will give their opinion on that? They, now they will understand. Yeah. But if you say skin bleaching, maybe. I and people from Jada don't understand. Ah, you understand. Mm -hmm. So this is something that is very. But there must be consequences too. Yeah. Consequences. But people will. Yeah, I know it will prolong the time because everyone will want to participate. Uh, you know what happened in Athenian democracy then, mm -hmm. when everyone was given an opportunity to come and participate. It prolong even the something it prolong it because, like he said, diverse opinions. Mm -hmm. But it will bring massive participation, and that is good. Yeah. Oh, that is good for our democracy. Yeah, I think this topic is a very dynamic topic. Yeah, we can take sure, sure. more and we can go to end. Yeah, yes. That's a very, very key important topic. But I think we should conclude it here. And then I will, I will ask the questions. What is your, um, because the government, we have recently we have seen the government, you know, declare that maybe this right, this current right is going to be mandatory for every citizen to wear a mask. So what is your, what is your idea on that? What is your opinion, general opinion on that? Okay. Um, I would I, I wanted that I wanted to do the conclusion on that, but um, nonetheless, um, we all know the risk this uh, current novel um, virus has caused. That is COVID nineteen, of course. It has caused uh, a global uh, pandemic. It's a global pandemic, of course, uh, that has uh, stunned whole every part of our sectors. When you look at both economic and politics, everything is uh, uh, stagnant at this moment in time as a result of one virus that. Uh, it's yet to be cured, of course, and uh, we've seen in the Gambia rising of cases uh, recently. It, it's like every day we are having new cases, and uh, what is so uh, I mean, frustrating and, uh, of course, uh, um, fear, fear to me is uh, for the fact that uh, listening to the piano of uh, Edward Francis Teaching Hospital, he said, if Gambia is not careful, we would, not, we would lose all uh, means of controlling this, and it will be a disaster for the Gambia because it's like. It's the main referral center, whereas uh, our health workers are very few. And uh, now recently we've seen that it is in fact these health workers who are going into, uh, who are being infected. He said if the majority of them are infected, who are going to take care of uh, the people, the sick people? This is something that people need to uh, fear. And uh, he said uh, we should also uh, be careful and also know that this is real and we have to, uh, in fact, he said this, and I think it's very important for us to say it. Uh, he said many people out there don't believe this is happening. And uh, even nurses, some nurses we are saying it's not happening until when it claimed the life of a nurse. It's worse when many people now know that this is a reality and now they are taking or adhering to the cases. To the question, um, you see that um, government have been declaring a state of emergencies. 
to ensure that we contain and uh, cope with this virus. But are we seeing uh, the results? By then, I could say yes, we were, because at some point, young people say they contain it, and we were not having the crisis of cases. In fact, when it, when it happened, it was like two, three, four days or five, you hear one case or not. But now, uh, consistently, last two weeks, we've seen every day Gambia is reporting the case, and it's spiking. And this is not telling well. For the fact that we know our health system, even the West, who has a vibrant, a very uh, good health system, are suffering because of this. Gambia should also learn from this. And uh, I must say that for government to come up with uh, emergency measures, they should ensure that the implementation is done. You cannot just sit down there, declare a state of emergency, everything is going now. You have to make sure you, you implement these policies. Without implementation, it's, uh, I would say, sorry for my word, but even yeah. the sense will be the right word to say yeah. for you to declare it. So that is my Experts have um, declared it as a global pandemic and they say, according to them, it is deadly and we have seen the death rates of coronavirus. So in that case, and unfortunately, they have also reached our small country, the Gambia. So in that case, I think it will be better for Gambia also to follow the rules and regulations that are the preventive measures of COVID-19 to prevent us from being infected by this deadly disease or to prevent other Gambians from getting the virus through contacts. Mm -hmm. So face marks being mandatory, we also have to go with um, some, I can say some things. Mm -hmm. So like the government, when they said that um, face mark is going to be mandatory, I think they should also provide face marks for Gambian people. Yeah. So that we should also be considered in that aspect because we all know the situation of the Gambia. Mm -hmm. Majority of Gambian people are living mm -hmm. in the world. Things are hard. So some when you go to some they will tell you I don't have the finance for face masks for the for my entire family. So in that regards I think it is the responsibility of the government to provide face masks for each and every citizen of the country because uh, they uh, say this is going to be yeah, 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 I wanted yeah, to yeah, one yeah, one sorry, sorry yeah. for before the conclusion. I think uh, it's very relevant. His points are quite relevant. Yeah. Uh, the government has the the, the sole body to ensure that this virus is totally kept out of this country. But also, mind me, I think uh, it's also our duty and responsibility to yeah. ensure that we provide that for ourselves. I know the financial capability, I know the government, we have a lot of uh, money, we, we all have things that are coming to, yeah. to, uh, to finance that. But the problem is, before government reaches out to you, you are in communities where recently we've seen cases coming yeah. from community transmission. Yeah. You cannot sit and pull your hand and expect the government to find you and give you that. and to protect you before the government reaches things might be made. So I think for it will be better for you to also do an effort to get it for yourself. I'm not saying this is what we should all do, but ensure that at least you do an effort to, to, to ensure that you protect yourself. That's right. From yeah. This. yeah, but if we all have the mindset that government should provide, government should provide, government should provide. Well, they, they, have have a role. Role. they have a role. Yeah, they have a role. We all know that they all have a role. In fact, I said they have money. In fact, I think, in fact, yeah. by now, face marks should be being distributed because Since, yeah. they announced it last week yeah. and I think the government, they always have a poor plan when it comes to solving problems mm -hmm. because if you know that you are going to implement it, you should act before it then. Sure. By right now, face marks should be distributed, distributed in communities so that members will be going for it before next week. They, 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 and they, they, the minister so, then okay, said, then, let, let us subscribe to the local page and this one, we are seeing it in communities, why not we go and get some of these things? On our own. I'm not um, yeah, denying you know, that the government. Some people, people, I'm also saying some people, people in the community. The mindset. Yeah. That already, be, okay, like yeah. you mentioned the mindset. Some people already decide that they will say, I don't have the money to buy a face mask. This is what I'm so saying. Now, how about if you are sick? Yeah. You are affecting many okay, people now. You know, the situation of COVID 19, you don't have money. Yeah. Yeah. This is what I said. You, okay. know, <laughs> you, know, you know, we all understand Gambia, our condition. Yeah. We understand this. This is it's a global pandemic. Yeah. This, in fact, no one planned for it. And the, At our level, you know, everyone will agree to the fact that, uh, I mean, whether you like it or not, yeah. whether the government like it or not, no yeah. one intended this to come here. Yeah, and uh, if, for instance, you cannot just look at me and know whether I'm infected. You don't even know whether somebody is infected. Okay. You are yeah, sitting yeah, with yeah. me and you're chatting. Wait, let me, let me yeah. But if, for instance, you do this as a, uh, okay, you think it's necessary, even before the government does it. Yeah. You know, the government can do it. They should, they should do it. 
But now I'm saying we should all have that instinct. We should all yeah, incorporate sorry. this in ourselves. Yeah, I agree. Like, yes, let's stop sending that message that even if you don't have it, let's stop sending that message that you should go out there and fight. This I have, is what I should Yeah, I said this because I have had people no. say that. I know, we've had this. They but say that um, they don't have money to buy face masks. So why not if the government and the government is aware of this that some of the cameras don't believe in COVID 19 and they say they will arrest any individual without face masks. And you should ask them. So to yes. make sure that they be on the same side or to make sure that they win justice to people. Who say that they don't have money? I think they should act before by providing face masks to people, mm-hmm. so that when you say I don't have money, they will say we give you face masks. What? That, I, I, don't, I don't think that will be a pretext for you. Of course, you cannot be arrested and you go to court and say. Let me do the people to that. You know we are yeah. our time. And then, you know, it's already. Okay. Uh, but this one, this topic, this topic, in fact, this is a topic of it all. Yeah. But like, I mean, we talk about this subsequently as time goes on. So I think we can give you each of you to give your final remarks so that you can. Yeah, okay. I think All right. Okay. All right. I'm I'm just very much delighted to be part of this debate. We have discussed a lot, and I have also learned a lot from my my boss, what the reality. Yeah. So I'm I'm hoping to be here again so that I can attain another uh, important so with yeah. you guys. So I'm just very delighted to also share my own view as a youth of this country because the program is mainly about the youth of the country. So as a youth in this country, I'm very much happy, and I will thank you all for inviting me into this. Important. Okay. Thank you for coming. Yes, as it is said, um, diversion does not mean uh, we are not united. We yeah. all have different opinions yeah. when it comes to any issue that is being raised. It doesn't mean you, anyone here has a high difference. Uh, this is about youth matters and it's about national development. And whenever a matters of youth is made mention, it's like uh, you genuinely, because uh, as an activist, I believe uh, with uh, us having an avenue where as we cascade this information, uh, youth's participation will be uh, worthless. And it's very paramount that uh, we all make this as a, uh, uh, I mean, our ultimate efforts to take part in the issues that affect us. Whether it's a uh, national or uh, community level, we all have that duty. Finally, to about this uh, COVID-19, we should be very careful with it and know that this is real and we should ensure that we adhere to the strict measures that we are, uh, it, uh, put in place by our health experts. That is, uh, you avoid crowd and also uh, let's follow whatever measures is put in place, wash your hands regularly and also ensure that uh, you protect others from uh, having this. Let's share this message and uh, that, that is it. Thank you. Yeah, we for the close uh, I want to say thank you to uh, guests. That was a very um, interactive debate. Thank you for coming. And then please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, we are in all social media networks, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Please follow. Um, we hope to give you more interactive shows. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for coming, Mr. Bobby, and thank you very much. And thank you. See you next time. Don't forget to subscribe and like our Thank you.